Hey, this is Jason Rulo, and you are listening to Sonic Perspectives. Another interview of Sonic Perspectives. I'm Rodrigo, and our guest today is Mr. Jason Rulo from Symphony X and from the project Three Rules. Jason, thank you for joining us. Absolutely, Rodrigo. Thank you for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, so we're here to talk about the new project Three Rules, which I think has been brewing for a while, right? Yeah, yeah, it's been a few years in the making. Yeah, so the album I think was made available fairly recently, right? To the to the people who did the crowdfunding, right? Yeah, and we have it actually released it everywhere December 11th, yep. Awesome. How has the reception to it been so far? Uh, so far, so good. A lot of people seem to really uh, genuinely yeah, be really digging it. Uh, a lot of really good feedback and seem to be worth the wait for the most part. Uh, really did take us a while. It was one of those things, you know how life is uh, these days and always, there's always uh, things coming up, things happening. So, yeah, we started, I had the vision for this project a long time ago, probably He's five, six years ago. Met Ron about five years ago. Um, I had known Arthur as well a little bit, but things didn't coordinate and kind of put it all together and then finally realized, yeah, this is this is a good match after jamming a few times. And Yeah, man, it almost took, geez, I guess three and a half years to finally get this thing to fruition. So <laughs> proud of it, really happy that it's finally here and uh, you know, can finally do some stuff. And hopefully everything can open up so we can actually play some shows here soon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the hope for sure. Yeah. No yeah. Doubt. Yeah, I know this has been in development for like for a while because I saw a video from Ron, uh, the guitar player, uh, at least two years ago with the title Three mm. Rules and you're in it for sure. But what took it so long? Well, a few different things. I mean, at one point uh, we started doing some stuff and then everyone got busy. Arthur had uh, some different gigs he was doing. He was doing some stuff going to Europe and whatnot. I got busy with Symphony X again. And yeah. uh, things just kind of kept happening. Uh, I've got two young kids, and I got divorced a few years ago. So, you know, just uh, just kind of moving, different things, you know, life, traveling, uh, whatnot. So, yeah. And then musically, we, we kind of got to a point where we thought we were happy. We were trying to do it kind of in-house. And honestly, we started tracking, and that was over a year ago, probably a year and a half ago. And it was like, yeah, this is cool for pre-production, but after all this wait, and, you know, this is really the first thing I've done that's really me aside from Symphony X, you know, besides, mm. you know, I've done projects for people and stuff, but, you know, this is my thing. So, you know, man, it needs to sound more smoking. It needs to really sound, drums have to sound a certain way, and, you know, that kind of thing. So we said, you know what, we're going to, it's going to take longer, but we're going to, this is just going to be pre-production and we're going to go and find a better studio. And then with the COVID stuff hit, we were actually ready to go to California and track there and do a few things with some connections we made and whatnot, but, uh, and all of a sudden nobody's traveling and all that. So like, okay, rethink it again. And we finally found uh third eye studios, <clears throat> excuse me, in the mountains here, which ended up being a, a fantastic room that we really like. And so we were able to do it all locally, which worked out and finally, yeah, finally get the thing done. Right. You did the mixing and the engineering yourself or was it someone else? Or? Uh, yeah, no, we had, uh, our boy Dave at, uh, at Third Eye, a few guys there who helped us, and those guys were excellent. So, yeah, we had to mix it, and we had it mastered um, by Eric, Rachel, in, uh, back in Jersey and from Tracks East. Okay. So, uh, yeah. All right. I love the fact that it's a trio, like a format that I appreciate a lot. I'm a fan of Rush, Police, Motorhead. Right. Was that the intention from the, the beginning or just how it played out? Yeah, no, that was pretty much the intention. I'm also a huge Rush fan. And I just thought the ease, something nice about a trio, just kind of keeping it simple. I thought about a keyboard player, but I was like, ah, eh, you know, it's just a whole other element. And another, I don't yeah. know, there was just something really nice about the trio vibe that I just really have liked. So, yeah, that was pretty much the intention. Like I said, we thought about it. And people along the way who've heard little bits and pieces, oh, you guys going to get a singer or something? And it's like, no, I don't know, man. <laughs> Instrumental trio, man. It's kind of its own thing, you know. Yeah. Kind of nice. Yeah. So we're, we're digging the vibe. 
Yeah, you can't hide it in a tree, right? You're either great or you're or you not a part of it, right? <laughs> That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah, there's no you can nobody can hide yeah. anything, cover up for anybody. Yeah. Yeah. No uh, not to say that you're hiding in, elsewhere, but uh, in a trio specifically, <laughs> you have to have the chops, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so. Especially yeah. this kind of music, obviously. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. But, Yeah. yeah, I think you hear trios, people think of like jazz trios and all that stuff. So obviously a lot of chops. And yeah, like I said, you need to be, you need to be on top of it. Yeah. And there's, uh, yeah, can't be any gaping holes. Yeah. Uh, you do the crowdfunding for this album, like I said, of which I'm a proud contributor. Um, I guess artists have to adapt to the new reality of the music, music business, right? Yes. And thank you for that. And yeah, I mean, that's kind of one, you know, something we, kicked around a lot in the beginning it's like you know which what do you do in this new climate you know and um it is really a challenge because and this kind of music too even in the even 10 years ago in a better climate musically speaking there's uh it's hard to you know get signed and do a lot with you know instrumental fusion trio let's face it right yeah so it's like okay this is something that <clears throat> we're gonna really be directly we kind of know our fan base where they are somewhat and You know, we know who we're dealing with, who we're kind of playing for, who's going to, you know, probably enjoy this stuff, hopefully. And so I think that was just kind of a direct way to, you know, hey, if we're going to make this happen, we did need some help. And that kind of is what it is, you know, if you're not going to have the label support and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. it was a great, a great boost. We were able to get our pre-production with all that and uh, really all the writing and early recording and everything with that. And it was a huge help and uh, to get this thing going because, yeah, who knows, it'd probably still be, it'd yeah. still be in production. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, you know, what the, the trick I think is, and what everyone's wondering is, you know, how much are the fans willing to contribute to the artist and in what ways now? Because, you know, it was already hard enough with the internet and, you know, royalties changing, publishing money disappearing and all these kind of things. And then you have COVID hit and now no one can play a show basically on top of that. And you go, okay, well. How much more can the music industry take, especially bands that are kind of in the middle, like Symphony X and stuff, where you kind yeah. of get lost in the sauce, where it's, you know, if you're not these mega stars who are okay because they're already loaded, then, you know, a lot of people have a perception, I think, that a lot of the bands they know of are really well off just because they've heard of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the reality is a lot of these people are just, you know, just working hard and just trying to survive like everyone else. Yeah. And so these kind of situations really hurt musicians and and all the production people all the roadies and all the all the techs and everything too i mean it's the whole industry yeah so it's I like i see it here all the time really yeah give. yeah mm. yeah uh, but anyway there's a lot of diversity in this release uh, you have a heavy song like 34b which starts the album and then kill the pain which is all about the groove so tell me how you put together this uh this track list Yeah, it was really fun because we, I think part of it was figuring out what we really are as a band. And that's what the writing process was. It's like, okay, wh where do we all come together and what, what happens here, you know? Mm -hmm. And so musically, it's like, <clears throat> which direction are we going was another question that we didn't really want to answer consciously. You know what I mean? It's kind of mm -hmm. like, we're just going to play and let it all hang out. And we all like so much different music. That was really fun. It was like, okay, Ron did most of the writing, but you know, he'd bring these different fields to the table and then I'd bring some different, a groove, I, you know, my parts and Arthur would bring his stuff. And just, so we're all contributing. And, and it was just kind of interesting. Some things were just so different than others, but we realized that's kind of what we are, you know? So mm. I'm always going to have that edge to my playing somewhere, even though I like so many styles and dynamics and groove and everything else, I'm still going to get worked into a frenzy and kind of go nuts. And you know what I mean? At some point. Yeah. And Ron, you know, we still have our personality traits, but yet we like these different styles. So <clears throat> I think that's really half the fun of it, like getting to play something like, you know, 34 beer, Memento with, you know, heavy, crazy stuff. And then for me, especially branching out into some of the funkier stuff and the different feels like Kill the Pain and, uh, you know, even from Maine to Spain, it's just yeah. much more of a groove track. It's just kind of a different challenge for me, so. Yeah, we were just kind of all over the map, just kind of naturally where it, we ended up, you know, and um, <clears throat> I think we're that's part of the fun of the thing. Ultimately, it's all pretty pretty rocking, and so there's a like a vibe that I hope is kind of continuous, even though it is so different, you know. 
Yeah. No, there's definitely a flow, uh, an ebb and flow to the track list, you know, even though it is, there's vast differences between the tracks. Like it, the one you just mentioned, from Maine to Spain, there's a Latin feel mm -hmm. or flamenco to it, which I like as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but this question, I think, gets asked a lot, but how do you name an instrumental song? I noticed some exotic names there, like Bad Preacher or Brain Damage, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sometimes, you know, you get like these working titles, these production, you know, titles that you're kind of, sometimes they're half a goof, especially with instrumental stuff, because it could mean anything, you know? Yeah. Um, so, like 34B, you could probably figure that out without me saying it, so I'll just kind of leave that one out there, you could, but you could figure out what that means. That was one of Ron's things, he had that named early. Okay. It's just kind of a goof. Um, let's see. Memento Mori was cool because <clears throat> Ron came up with that too, and that's from the samurai thing, and it basically means everybody must die, right? We all die eventually, and so mm -hmm. it's kind of this morbid. The samurai thing is like the whole, you know, it's a pride and honor thing, and it's like okay, accept death and then face your day like that, right? Okay. And we just felt that vibe was, was just a cool thing, like you know, that's what it reminded us of, like a, mm -hmm. a big, you know, war was going to break out or something. So, yeah, sometimes it's more the vibe like that. Sometimes it's even a joke. Um, Maine to Spain was kind of a goof, too, because Ron's actually from New Hampshire, <laughs> which is right next to Maine, right, as you know, up in Toronto, probably. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, <clears throat> he's like, but New Hampshire has no ring to it, you know? And the Spain, of course, because of the Spanish guitar influence of the song. So he's like, it's yeah. kind of Ron going in Spain, right? So I was like, oh, so I named it Maine to Spain. It's like, okay. <laughs> we were going to joke. I have a lot of family up there in that area in Cape Cod and New mm. England and stuff, and we were going to joke and have them, you know, with the, with the accent, with this, you know, the okay. Massachusetts accent and all that kind of stuff talking about, Hey, what's the matter? Oh, what? You're not proud of New Hampshire? Why you got to go to, you know, <laughs> we got a name in Maine. How oh, what's wrong with New Hampshire? That's where he's from. What's wrong with this guy? You know, that kind right. of stuff. So yeah, there's some of it's just kind of a goof, you know? <laughs> I see. All right. Um, what caught my attention as well is that, uh, this is a style that you can listen to it like, you know, paying attention to every note and every inflection, but also you can leave it in the background and doing other stuff around the house, right? So it's it's kind of versatile in a sense, right? Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, in the studio walkthrough you did for, for us who contributed for the crowdfunding, you mentioned Neil and Eddie, Neil Peart and Eddie Van Halen, two geniuses that mm -hmm. we lost this year. Can you tell me how these two yeah. guys shaped your musical taste and your playing? Oh my gosh, tremendously. Well, <clears throat> believe it or not, Eddie was an influence before Neil for me mm. because Van Halen was one of the very first when I was just starting to play drums. And I remember watching the Unchained video and just being like, oh my gosh, that's that's what I want to do with my life. That's the <laughs> energy coming off the stage. You know what I mean? It was just yeah. you know, like, that's the coolest thing ever. You mean the live one from Eddie Oakland, Alex, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's live, yep. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and so, and right, I mean, at that point, that's it. It was all Van Halen, and Eddie and Alex were just the coolest things. I mean, those guitar riffs, I just couldn't believe they were brothers, and they were both so great and everything. You know what I mean? That band was, like, everything to me. Yeah. And that was around 1984, so that record came out, like, right after I had done all that discovering, and then that blew my mind. So, yeah, Eddie was just, to me, I mean... I almost played guitar because of Eddie, you know what I mean? And so it was okay. like that kind of thing. I actually I actually played guitar before drums a little bit and took a few lessons and stuff, realized it wasn't for me, but it was, yeah, it was because of Eddie that I even wanted to do that. So then, of course, my attention really was on Alex, and um, Unchained was the first song I ever learned how to play on the drums. Oh, okay. And so, yeah, that band was just everything for me. Um, <clears throat> and then, forget it, and it was Discovering Rush a couple of years later, it was probably about a year later, I guess. Yeah. And then, uh, Neil, I mean, forget it. This, you know, tried to figure out every single thing the guy was playing and just he tried to emulate everything. And just, just the way he, not just the chops, but the way he wrote and I mean, talk about a trio. And that's how I would sell that even to my mom as a kid. Hey, check this out. These guys are great. You know what? There are only three of them. Do you do that? <laughs> you know, well, yeah. there's no way. I mean, any band who could, yeah. So the musicality and just the phrasing, uh, along with the chops, of course, just blew my mind. So, yeah, I mean, I tried to play every note I could that of Neil's, you know I mean? Yep, they were, yeah. they were the deal. They're, they're definitely two of my very, very favorite bands and most influential people to me. 
musically. Yeah. I'm just slowly learning to play guitar, you know, after 46 years of age. Now I'm playing guitar and I realize how special oh, it nice. is. And yeah, so right. we lost him this year, man, <laughs> sadly. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, Eddie's phrasing too. I mean, just the, uh, just incredible. The fluidity, and and the fun and the attitude. You know, he just always gave off this attitude that he was having fun. Yeah. And everything was good and like you know, it was just like yeah. I mean, everybody who didn't want to be when I was a teenager, I mean, man, it, like there was nobody cooler than Eddie Van Halen. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I agree yeah. with you. 100%. Uh, and I know yeah. that right now touring is very much a pipe dream for like most of us, but is there a chance or at least the intention of Three Rules doing some live dates once this thing clears up? Or Yeah, absolutely. Mm. You know, this kind of it started really as a project, but I'll tell you, this is definitely a full on, this is a real band. Mm -hmm. You know, we, uh, we really enjoy the chemistry. You know, we really get along well. We just love musically what's happening. So we're, we've already got five more songs you know, that we're working on and we're just going to keep writing and keep this thing going. And yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's how I look at it. I'd like to definitely do some dates with this band and yeah, see where, you know, see what kind of fun we can have in between the symphony X runs and stuff for sure. And I think it's a really fun live band, you know, because, you know, obviously the musicians like to see this kind of band live. I mean, that's yeah. kind of the whole thing, right? Getting to a club and yeah. And really experience the energy firsthand it's never the same right as the record so it's, yeah you hope it's better live anyway right so, yeah, yeah of course yeah well i was looking forward so, to seeing you here in toronto for the symphony x 25th anniversary tour with uh, fire wind and mm -hmm. primal fear but that was postponed and now cancelled uh what is the latest yeah. on that yeah that ended up being cancelled um not only due to the COVID situation but also um, we've made a change in booking agents along with a lot of people right. that were using that booking agent. Yeah. So that's, that's really the main reason that that didn't happen now. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> not sure that they would be ready for it anyway, but yeah, so we're, we're talking about, you know, what we can possibly do. Um, uh, you know, I don't want to say much cause then if it doesn't happen, you know, people, you know, whatever, but, uh, Mm. Definitely talking about things, you know, towards the end of the year, you know, hopefully we can. We've got a couple festivals that are still booked right now and I think in Finland and Europe and a couple little dates here and there. So, you know, we'll see if those stay open. And, um, of course, we do have South America end of August. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that that will be good to go. And then maybe maybe we could do a little something in the fall, possibly, you know. Okay. And, but, uh, yeah. yeah. Everything right now is wishful thinking, but I hope those plans exactly. do pan out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I asked Mike Lapond about this earlier this year. Uh, I spoke with him about a different project he's doing right now. He's ha he has so many projects that I lost count anyway. But uh, mm -hmm. in one of the <laughs> chats that I had with him, uh, I asked him, do you think Symphony X will return eventually to that uh, neoclassical vibe at one point? Or the way you're sounding now is the way you want to progress with? Are you going to tell me his answer? <laughs> I, th <laughs> I, think, uh, I think it's always a progression, honestly. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think with Romeo, it's really, um, you know, he's always trying to top himself. I and mean, we're always trying to do that. We're always trying to just get better. And I think, um, I don't know, it might be interesting to maybe kind of revisit some of that stuff in like a new way. Okay. You know, it might be kind of a cool, cool concept. But I think just trying to stay current and trying to stay, you know, fresh, you know, and, and just kind of, you know, see what happens. I think the band's going to stay pretty heavy, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, I mean, that's definitely, definitely the roots of the band too. So. Right. It'd be interesting. I, I know some people are calling for the, uh, the first album to get redone and stuff. And I don't, I don't think we'll be able to probably pull that off, but I know there's some, some of the old, like you said, the neoclassical stuff people like on that. Yeah. There's a couple records. Yeah. Well, we'll see how, yeah. we'll see where that takes you guys. But uh, I look forward to the next yeah. chapter of that, man. Uh, and the question no, that thank you very much. The question that probably everyone asks you in every interview is, why don't you have a live DVD release? <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, the reason is because we've, you know, we, of course, have, you know, pondered this many times. It really comes down to, we just haven't felt like we've been able to do it the way we really want to 
you know, with a real, because we want to have a, a really great production. It has to be has to be what we want. After all these years, especially, it's got to mm. be smoking. You know, so it's yeah. like every time we talk about it, it seems like okay, well, this production thing fell through, or hey, maybe we're gonna go to South America and maybe play with this orchestra and do this. Okay, well, yeah, that, oh, but then this falls through. You know what I mean? It just seems yeah. like it's just never all come together. So, of course, we definitely want to. And who knows, maybe during a time like this is a time where we could focus and maybe we, we do that. I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. You know, it's something we could actually do if, since we have kind of downtime. We could do some kind of streaming version of it or something. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely something we want to. We, we Obviously, we want that just for the sake of the history of the band. I think it'd be great to just have that. It needs to be out there. It needs to exist since people can see. People who've never seen us live can see what it's about. Of course, because I think we're really different live than on the records, and so yeah, yeah. I hope we can make that happen this next year or so. It'd be awesome. I mean, again, it's not it's not because we don't want to, and yeah, we get that question so much. <laughs> but again, it's because of the standards that we have, and because you know, you know, we just don't want it to be anything less than what it should. It should be just great. And it's like if you know, if the budget isn't there for the for the production, or the the film crew's not right, or the venue's not right, you know, it's, it has to all be right. So. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, hopefully we'll make it happen, man. But I'm glad people still want it, so we'll we'll find a way one of these these days, hopefully sooner here than later. All right. (laughs) And uh, you had a a major scare, like health care, a few years ago and even had to sit out one of the tours. Are you okay health-wise nowadays? Mm -hmm. Yes, knock on wood, man. I'm clean bill of health. Thank you. uh, Yeah, it's been, geez, I guess it's been seven, eight years now. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I stay in good shape. I do a lot of mountain biking and, you know, a lot of playing and stuff. Just try to stay healthy, which I've always done anyway, but, you know, even more so now. But, uh, yeah, knock on wood, man. All's well. I don't take any medication or anything for any of that stuff. I have clean bill of health. Awesome. And, Gla- uh, yeah, yeah, glad yeah. to hear that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. it. Uh, changing the subject a little bit, you had a food truck a few years ago called Joe Mama's Famous Foods. Is that still active? Yeah. And did anyone ever recognize you or? Um, I, yeah, I did get a few fans end up at the truck here and there, <laughs> but, uh, cool. I didn't really do that much with it. It's not active anymore. Mm. Um, yeah, so I have, I kind of, I got so busy and I ended up not, you know, doing much with it. So I ended up selling it a couple of years ago. Oh, I have, I still do food things. I'm still, I still have some ideas as well. And I might actually be even, uh, I might even be doing some stuff online, some videos and stuff, some food ideas that I have. So oh, cool. some kind of fun ways to connect the food and the music and everything. And I get a lot of questions about the food truck and everything. So I think, See? yeah, maybe people <laughs> might be into, <laughs> yeah, yeah, some, some food related things here. So yeah. yeah, we'll see. Good stuff. In conclusion and going back to three rules coming full circle, mm-hmm. <laughs> where can the fans find mm-hmm. out more information about the band? Yeah, so the website is threerulesband.com, mm. and then there's always jasonrulo.com as well. And so we're, <clears throat> we haven't been the best with social media um, leading up to this, but we're trying to be good now. So we have those sites happening. We have a YouTube channel. Mine is called uh, Drum Rulo Please, like drum roll please, but my name instead. Okay. And, um, and then, of course, there's a Three Rules YouTube channel too. So we're trying to get everything up there. Uh, we'll be doing Instagram stuff. So if you can follow us on there, follow us on Instagram and YouTube, and we'll get everybody together and let everybody know what's going on as we keep. We're going to probably be releasing uh, some new music before, you know, not that long. I mean, we just released the record. We've got more videos that will be coming out. And uh, actually in a few days here, we're going to release another video. And, uh, yeah, so we plan to really keep pumping it out, especially when we're all, Good stuff. All pent up and everybody yeah. needs entertainment. So, yeah, man, yeah. we'll do what we can. <laughs> All right. So I hope the interview gets the name across, you know, to a, to a much larger extent than it is right now and that you guys get to be on stage sometime soon. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank yeah. you very much, Rodrigo. Really appreciate you. No worries, man. Thank you for the interview and have a good one. Uh, you too. Take care, man. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope you enjoyed this chat with Jason Rulo. You can check out this interview on many formats, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. Also, please follow us on Twitter and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
Let's wrap it up with the song Momento Mori from the debut album of Three Rules entitled Rule of Three. Stay safe and see you next time. <laughs>